Hello, Box Scholar here. Thank you for joining me today. This is the second video in my series, How to Play Ragtime. The first video was uh, Scott Joplin's School of Ragtime, which I hope you've had time to view and work with. This video is the first of two videos that focuses just on the left hand, the foundation of uh, ragtime playing. Uh, before we continue, I'd like to thank each and every one of my uh, subscribers and all YouTube viewers for viewing my videos. It means a lot to me. I make my videos for you. Uh, without you, I wouldn't do this. So thank you for that. Uh, this video here focuses on mostly on octaves. I feel that uh, playing octaves in all sorts of ways really enhances your ability to play your left hand, and you should not neglect your left hand in playing. I envision the hands in piano playing, especially ragtime playing, to be like a, uh, a tree. The left hand is like the root and the trunk, the foundation of the tree. The right hand is like the branches and the leaves of the tree. You have to have both to have the complete picture. But if one is more important than the other, it's definitely the left because uh, you need the root and the trunk you can have that without the branches and leaves. You can't have branches and leaves without the foundation. So do not neglect the left hand in your piano practice. And I hope this video can be of use to you. This video is also unique in that it's geared towards all levels. So we're going to do our exercises pretty slowly. If you're in a more advanced level, feel free to speed these up to as, as fast as you would like. If you're not so advanced, you can even do these slower. So don't feel like you have to, you know, you're locked into to just playing them the speed that I play them. I'm playing them slow so I can show them to you. Um, another thing unique about this video is it's not just ragtime. You can apply these to all styles, especially Liszt, Hungarian Rhapsodies. Liszt uses these techniques all the time. So the better you can increase your left hand capabilities, not just in ragtime playing, but you know you can you can play uh, anything. List Chopin. So let's start by warming up, warming up the left hand a little bit. The pinky right here, the fifth finger. Sort of like little rainbows going to the next. You also want the feeling like you're very secure. You know exactly where you're going to land on the next note. Let's do that now and play the chromatic scale. Just with the fifth finger. Not too short, not too long. I'm sure many of you know this already, but I, I just want to point it out that do not, under any circumstances, play your fifth finger flat on, on the side. Okay, that, that might be nice for karate, karate chop, but not piano playing. You want to play on right on the flesh of your finger, not on the very direct tip, but right here. Let's move on to octaves. We're going to add our thumb to it, and we're just going to bounce a little bit. Let's bounce from C to G to C to G. Very nice, secure feeling. You know exactly where you're going to land. I want to point out a few things about playing octaves that are very important. First of all, Make sure you sit to where your elbow is right at the front of your, uh, of your stomach right here. Uh, second thing is make sure your, your shoulder 
is not raised, it's not tense. Make sure your wrist is not tense. It's firm, but it's not tense. And make sure your fingers are very firm and secure. You want almost a tight feeling in your knuckles and your fingers, because that, your fingers have to support all your arm weight. You need to let the gravity work its way down the arm. If, you're, if either your wrist or your shoulder are tense, it's like having a knot in a garden hose. The water will not flow through a garden hose if there's a knot in it. The energy will not flow through your arm if either your, your, um, your shoulder or wrist are tight or tense. So keep that in mind. Also, you want to make sure your elbow is closer to your body rather than farther away. So avoid, avoid having it out too far. It's better closer than farther out. You want just let the gravity work its way, work your arm down for you. You want to make it as natural as possible. Now we're going to play um, just a few major scales. here or here, just let the, let the gravity go down your arm and let your arm weight just be natural and it's all the weight is being caught on your fingertips. Also another thing to keep in mind in octave playing, do not do this. I've seen this before and it's bad octave technique. I can feel the tenseness here, it feels tight. You want to just keep these fingers neutral right here. Uh, you want to keep them just, just maybe an inch off the key. I would suggest practicing all the major scales, all 12 of them, at any speed you would like. I would suggest slowly and maybe work up to faster. Next, we're going to go one, two, three, four. So an accent on every fourth note. Now, one, two, three, one, two, three. Triple it, triple it. Repeat that as many times as you'd like. No tension anywhere. And now, the last ex octave exercise I have for you are arpeggios. video, uh, I'm going to continue on the left hand, but I'm going to focus mainly on left hand patterns that are used in ragtime. So along with this video, along with the next video, I hope you can use uh, in your daily and regular piano practice to help you increase your left hand techniques. Do not neglect the left hand. The better you can play left hand, the better your ragtime will become. Thank you for viewing. Bye.